If you haven't done so yet, make sure you pause the video and try the question on your own first before listening on. We have a person moving in a circular path and they are doing so at a constant speed. The fact that the object is moving at a constant speed along a circular path indicates to us that this is an example of uniform circular motion. During uniform circular motion, the period of the motion, which is symbolized by the letter t, is equal to the circumference, 2 pi times radius, divided by the speed of the object. We have the radius given to us as 10 meters. We can plug that in. And then we have the speed given to us as 6.1 meters per second. When we punch this into our calculators, we should get approximately 10.3, and then the unit will be in seconds. Period is a measurement of time. It's basically how long it takes the person to go one time around the circular path. In part B, we are asked to find the normal force exerted on the addict from the seat. And to do that, it will be helpful to draw a free body diagram. So here is the circular path. The person is located in part B at the top of the circular path. There are two forces acting on him. There's the downward gravitational force, which we can symbolize with mg. And then there is the normal force, which is essentially the seat pushing upward on the person. So this would be the normal force, Fn. Now, during uniform circular motion, we know that the centripetal force is equal to the mass times the speed squared divided by the radius of the circular path. The centripetal force is going to be made up of these two forces, so we have to include both of them in our centripetal force expression. Now, we can see that the gravitational force is pointing downward, so we perhaps can call that negative mg, and then the normal force is pointing upward, so we would have plus the normal force Fn. Now, take note that the acceleration of the individual along a circular path always points towards the center of the circle. Recall that the acceleration in a circular motion question is v squared over r. So you can see, if you look carefully, this expression right here is equal to the acceleration of the object. But the fact that the person is at the top of the path and the fact that the acceleration points towards the center of the circle would indicate that in part b the acceleration should be pointing downward towards the center of the circle and therefore it should be negative. So we must make sure we include a negative sign in front of our mv squared over r and again that's because the acceleration on a circular path points towards the center of the circle and in this case pointing towards the center is downward. Now, we want to solve for the normal force, so let's go ahead and add mg to both sides of this equation. So now we have fn is equal to mg minus mv squared over r. We can then just plug in the known values. The mass is 80 kilograms. g, of course, is 9.8 meters per second squared. We have the mass again. The speed was 6.1 meters per second. Don't forget to square it, and then don't forget to divide by the radius of 10 meters. When we punch this into our calculator, we're going to get approximately 486 newtons for that normal force. In part C, the person is now located at the bottom of the circular path. So he's down here. We once again have mg pointing downward, the normal force it's pointing upward, and the center of the circle is located here. Now notice, again, that because the centripetal acceleration must point towards the center of the circle, that this time the centripetal acceleration is pointing upward, and therefore it's going to be positive. So proceeding as we did before when we said the centripetal force equals mv squared over r, we have the downward negative mg plus the upward positive normal force. This will now equal positive mv squared over r. It's positive because the centripetal acceleration is pointing upward towards the center of the circle. 
we'll add mg to both sides. And then we have fn is equal to mg plus mv squared over r. We'll fill in all the same values, the mass times g, the mass times the speed squared divided by 10. This time we're going to get a different answer because of the presence of the plus sign. When you work this out, you should get about 1100 newtons for the normal force. Notice the normal force is larger at the bottom of the circular path than it is compared at the top of the circular path.